A beautiful outside of the RNG arena as RNG take game one over Sooning, and it was it was business. It was just business. You yep. know? Nothing else really to say about it. They just played better. They just landed. They could have probably remembered what happened back. Not uh. only in spring split, in 2018 summer split, they're going to try and make something pay. Yeah, and Xiao Hu was at the forefront of that as he picked himself up an MVP. I'm not I'm not mad whatsoever. I feel like it was going to be either Carso or Xiao Hu. The fact that Xiao Hu's getting this love is great. Congratulations to him and how he's able to play on the Zoe. Yeah, absolutely. That's his sixth MVP. Or is it his seventh? Not 100% sure. I don't it's know. The if sixth. It, this sixth. is the sixth. Yes. Got it. And, uh, you know, it's great to see RNG finally coming up towards the end of a season where they're now a multi threat team. For the first time, I'd say, like, in a very long time. Yeah, like, they definitely can play through, like, my mind, all three lanes. They're using Long Sing essentially as someone who's on the weak side and can play respectfully. Like, a good example, like Sword from Griffin. But, I mean, they want. Wang Sing is definitely a great carry threat through his jacks as well. A lot of these skirmishes were working heavily in favor of Karsa and Shahu. And this one's the one that I was talking about, where Ezreal goes up topside when Suning are going for an all in play. Aatrox has to come through mid, and then he realizes he can't go back bottom lane because very easily the Sivir and Lux are going to keep you down. So now you just screwed everybody over. Yep. The I, Ezreal I... can't deal with the top laner, the Aatrox can't deal with the bot laner, and you lost. Both Rift Herald and Dragon. It was almost like they were playing 4D chess and then realized they were playing checkers. You know, it was kind of like the moves were all there. Yeah. We had everything set up, but it's the wrong game. <laughs> that was literally the largest, basically like one of those dominoes that just uh, uh, take out the entire set. Like I've never seen something as bad. It as was that just in my a life. wall. Like a guy does, like set up like a load of dominoes, and then the wall comes down. Yeah, because you like a lot of people <laughs> out there will just forget the fact that Ezreal and like Suning's bottom lane literally not only forced the flash off of Uzi, it made it so at Ming could not rotate towards the mid lane any longer. You had to stick by the lane matchup. And you said it. You said it in the cast as well. Like, that SMLZ was winning that lane. Like, Uzi was under pressure. He was a little bit behind in CS, which is not typically what we see in terms yep. of a, a Sivir versus Ezreal matchup. And that one move, that one misstep, can literally decide the, the next 20 minutes of a game. And it feels bad. They tried. They had a few opportunities where they were able to get picks on the Gragas in particular. But going back to RNG, the fact that RNG was able to get this early uh, goal lead for themselves based off of you know that play that happened through there, and then just business as usual as you made a mention of uh, that they recognize they can play the safer route. You know, suddenly you realize that as uh, Uzi is farming up so well that he's able to get full fill that like 28 minutes into the game. So if the game is going in that trajectory, you don't even need to go for like riskier plays in the red side jungle. They're like, okay, we can just play through what is a stronger AD. I think as well that the damage that came out from Uzi's Sivir in that particular game, in that last team fight, I think almost took Sooning by surprise because they hadn't fought in such a long time. They were yeah. like, okay, we got items. We're good. We can we can tank this. And it's like, oh, they also got items. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this mightn't go as well as we probably thought it was. We might need to stay up, stall for a little bit longer. And you can see Stake leading his team back onto stage for game two. And like I said, you know, they're looking good. They're feeling good. Always great to see an RNG coming in, especially before playoffs where they look so damn strong. Yeah, and a lot of it's through different ways now. In Spring Split, I was concerned because they were linearizing themselves through team fights, through, you know, 5v5s, protect Uzi, and I didn't like that idea. I liked the identity that they had in 2018 regular seasons where they were just able to play through two lanes and had, you know, a great amount of carry potential through even uh, their top laner and Let Me. Now they're coming into the split saying, yeah, we still have that with Long Sing now. And with how well and consistently well that is, the Shahu's playing, you know, you barely see much of Uzi in these fights. He's not somebody that you ultimately, you know, rely on to get an MVP if they're going to win games. It's not and the case. He's a rock. He's consistent, the cornerstone of this team, and has been for such a long time. Sooning, very serious faces on the players here. No, he no. always has that face. That's fair. It is MS SMLZ. Has, like that's he. the face. <laughs> Actually, a more serious one is if, if Sword Art's not smiling, because that guy, much like Nehun and uh, the LCK, you always can track him smiling, even after a loss comes into the next game trying to cheer up the squad. He, yeah, it's like, it's no, like no, speaking of, you know, Sword Art, he's, uh, you know, Definitely someone who uh, potentially is someone who could potentially look for picks, look for a better kind of laning matchup as yep. such. Someone who could enable SMLZ. But 
you know, what do they have to do? What do Sunny want to change? Because there were some positives in that game. It yep. just, unfortunately, didn't have all the answers to the quiz that RNG were throwing at them. Yeah, I'm never going to be the type to say, change everything through the trap. Mm -hmm. I think that they were able to get what they wanted there. And actually, you know, early game was working out well for them. I think that one thing I would like to see change, especially off of a dominant performance like that, is just go back to comfort. Thresh pick, a Nautilus pick would always be nice. Of course, there's a great focus on to Xiaohu and his gunners. You gotta believe it. I don't know if I there are any. They're not actually gunners. They're yeah. not the official I gunners. I just love calling but them no gunners. But one, no one's gonna understand no one what you say if you do not say gunners. Yes. <laughs> I just love putting it out there because basically it makes it easier on your eyes to be able to see the screen. As simple yeah. as it is. Um, you don't. Some people actually change the screen brightness to make it in that fashion for the PC, but you can't do that for Dan. These are, you know. Not public PCs, but PCs you must reset every time. So Yep. Get those Far glasses. easier just to get the stylish glasses. And ever since he's got him, Xiaohu has looked incredible. As we go into picks and bans for game two of this best of three between Suning Gaming and Royal Never Give Up. The Grag is going to be the change up here for the side of Suning. They do not want Carson to get that again. All right. Good call. Olaf is still banned. Oh, it's banned. It's getting consistently banned, actually. Yep. A lot of respect being paid to the champion with how well it's able to, you know, snowball early game advantages. Karma left open. Finally. Karma taken. However, we talked about this a little bit ourselves. The hard counter to Karma is a Tristana, which we saw G2 use against SK the other day. True. That's just not the style of RNG. I don't think that Shahu's going to be coming out with a, uh, with a Tristana. Don't expect that to be happening in Long Sing. Why do you ruin my dreams? Yeah, Rise. I know. <laughs> yeah, sad face. They're just happy enough with the Tom Kench. Worked out in game one, going to work out in game two, you got to think. And now Corky looks like it's going to be the preferential pick for the side of RNG. Yeah, and I just love first rotation, or at least uh, in general, first day's Corky. Because no matter what side you're on, you're hiding it. Now it can be played in top lane. It's able to accomplish so much for the team. So, going into this game, much like we saw in the last series, I want to be able to see if it's going to be going to Xiaohu or Long Sing. I will say this, though. Xiaohu has a meme regarding Corky. How much damage he was able to put in one of the games. He was able to not only solo out Elder Dragon at the same time as the team was contesting a Baron, goes in and just essentially 1v9s a team fight. His history on the champion has been massive. So you're telling me you probably think it's going to be. Probably, yeah. probably. I think it's yeah. going to be Xiaohu <laughs> picking the champion. Well, we'll see now. Soon I'm going to respond with that Silas pickup and also the Rek size. So picking up what they feel to be a strong early game matchup into the jungle, give Wei Wei something more of a, a pressure match to be able to kind of go toe to toe with Karsa. It makes sense that that's the Olaf ban now because Olaf into the Rek size, incredibly good for Olaf. They just wanted to secure a pretty decent matchup for the Rek side. At the same time, now engage and gank pressure is there if we're talking about the shield the speed boost that rex is able to have so that's also pretty nice as we're going to be the final pick in the first pick phase for rng and they start putting the bands down onto the ad carry want to put him smlz onto something that he's not super comfortable with and honestly in this composition the car the, the karma excuse me can go either into the support or into one of the solo lanes i wouldn't be surprised to see sword i'd take it up yeah, especially since uh, I think both of these supports, Ming and Sword Art, are definitely, you know, mage types. They would like to be able to at least win through the laning phase if all else fails. I want to be able to see if that's going to be the truth there for Sunning. I think one thing we want to focus on is the Varus. I don't think we've seen Varus in quite some time, and I think this would be a great opportunity to see it on SMLZ. And also SMLZ, another champion too. He's a great Jin player. He is a f he's been doing so well, and whenever Jin comes into the meta, he's able to accomplish that. Kobe and the LCK, uh, LEC. LCK. Uh, yeah, and the LEC was able to pick up that champion and really show us that the buff that he was able to get on his W helped him quite a bit, so it's possible to pick up that so he can go for it. Could see SMLZ on the Karma as well. See Fnatic playing that with Reckless quite a bit. You know, not impossible to have. He just like smiling as if like, no, we don't do that. It's like literally like the Black Panther meme. It's like, we don't do that here. <laughs> Maybe on Sunning, but we ain't going that far deep. Now, Rakan locked in, so that Karma still unsure as to where it's going to go or whose hands are going to take it. Yeah, we have 15 seconds until we can figure out. Mostly, 3AD carry. Want to at least know what SMLZ is willing to play. Told you! Oh my I told God. you! <laughs> Bow down to my analysis of Global League of Legends. Yeah. SMLZ, you're going to pick up that Karma. Look. <laughs>
I created a window, but for me it was like 80%. No, 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 no. I'm not gonna. Give, I'm, not, I'm not gonna give myself 20. I was like 99% sure. They were gonna put and I was SMLZ. Ralph Wiggum throwing myself yeah, through the window, just right like, let's there. go, Karma! I can't believe it. <laughs> All right, welcome, SMLZ. Uh, another another support-type champion. Remember, just before Rift Rivals, you came in there playing the Yumi, because they tried that yep. Yumi Pike bot side. Now they're going to go for the Karma. Yeah. If you are wondering about how this matchup goes, you know, you can just check out Fnatic's uh, latest game yep. with it. Mm -hmm. Reckless did play very damn well on it. You just don't die with this bot lane. It's you very don't. difficult to die and kill this bot lane. And Ezreal is going to be coming in with a poke mindset, but he's not. He's just going to be out poked and out pushed by the mm -hmm. Karma. So that's certainly going to be there from Suning. If we're just talking about speed boost, I was talking about speed boost in the, in the context of top lane and allowing uh, Rek'Sai to get an easier gank. Now you have a speed boost there from the damn Rakan. So an easier engage that he's able to provide for his team. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting now. Sooning adapting, trying to throw a spanner into the works. That is the RNG machine. Coaches obviously very, very familiar with each other and kind of obviously maybe having a little bit of laughs. Like, ah, Steak, I got you there. Uh, you weren't expecting the Karma ADC. I'm going to love to see how Sooning can operate this. Now, SMLZ, SMLZ is a fun one. 2018, when the changes came through in the bot side of the map and we've been seeing far more mages, the LPL, a lot of teams are resistant. RNG was resistant to those changes. IG were resistant. They're just like, no, we're playing AD carries. We're going to be supporting them through by any means necessary. If we're going to longer games, we're going to longer games. But it was actually Rogue Warriors through SMLZ that was playing multiple mages in the bottom lane. He was playing the Heimerdinger, the Karthus. That man was shameless. All right, so it seems like coming into this split, he's recognized, hey, I have an opportunity. I've been watching Fnatic in the LEC. Let's go for it. Karma there for SMLZ. I am excited to see who's out Sony can do this. Now, of course, they are still up against an incredibly daunting task of taking down RNG. But if the first step in taking them down is in this particular Karma pick, this could be potentially the turnaround for Sooning in this series. Joe, who has already upset me? Why? Didn't pick Corgi Corky. Oh, no. He can't butt wiggle. He, so something I've noticed, him and Faker never play that skin. And, Fa and I will say, Faker didn't play it first. <laughs> I wonder what's the purpose. This is the interview questions that we should send in his direction. I want no distractions. Is yeah. what you're <laughs> I don't look to disrespect the true animations. I look to disrespect the oh true goodness. destroying them. I'm an artist by heart. Yeah, he's literally the Jin of, of mid lane <laughs> in terms of canonic. But uh Incredible. Oh, it looks like the the Colonel. Does that mean he looks at towards uh What are you looking at me for? I don't know what the hell that says. Yeah, I don't know, dude. I'm just saying you you've seen these graphics a hell of a lot more than I do. I'm assuming that means that during pick and ban phase it was like, ah oh, yeah, RNG got this. And then he saw the Karma ATC, he was like, nah, we going full on into this. <laughs> nice invade though. So this is a pretty damn good idea from RNG to you know, get in an invade and go for a split side, knowing that they can put SMLZ down, but here we go, Maple. Sack same. Got one right back in. Little move in, flash, knock up, Carsa flashes away. Will he be able to get away? Yes, he will. Maple taking a lot of return damage overall. You gotta say it's gotta be advantage to RNG. It's nice that they were able to back, you know, bat that gank away. We're super close to being able to nail the kill. It makes it a little harder from Carsa now. Losing a sum on that one. Still, good call from J4. Going buff to buff, and now let's see what he ends up getting. Not that just makes it so Weiwei's not going to be able to have a red buff for himself. Sadly. I was going to say, Weiwei didn't even take a buff. Has got Hail of Blades, though. Have seen that. No, actually, probably not something we see it that often with Rek'Sai's anymore, considering the nerfs that Hail of Blades did receive. That's my typical one, actually. Sadly. Really? Yeah, because uh, the two best ones you end up going for is Karsis fighting for his life. Um, you know, uh, it's actually just been the Conquerors. Hellblade is a good one for just skirmishing. If you're able to find a gank, you're going to be able to get your uh, three rotations accused pretty quickly. So we have still been seeing Hail of Blades. The Conqueror's nerf, I feel, is a lot more con uh, concerning. Whatever you do, don't mention Rek'Sai Hail of Blades versus Conqueror to Ender. 
That's all. That's all you gotta do. The guy has a vendetta about actually like that particular. Matchup, I thought he hated press the attack. He hates everything that isn't Halo Blades. Oh yeah, yeah, okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I He it. thinks Halo Blades is the greatest. I Halo. like Halo Blades too. I was a converter. I converted to Halo Blades. We're gonna see now. Wait, wait. Does not get hit by that Scryer's Bloom. We're gonna all see right. Knight coming in. Double flashes. Double TP from the side of RNG. Wei Wei has no flash. Wei Wei has no way out. And Wei Wei will be given up as first blood to the top laner of RNG. And that's just typical confusion in how to deal with the Ezreal and Tom Kench. But I thought RNG played very well. Because Wei Wei, in a, if we're just talking about if he's not listening to his teammates, muted them, he did the natural thing. Go to the Tom Kench because at the end of the day, Ezreal's going to go to the Tom Kench anyways. And you have someone who's going to be already protected. You don't want to put too many resources onto the Ezreal. But the, his team didn't hear that. And he actually couldn't reach him. They're all in on Uzi, while he was alone on Ming when there's a double teleport coming through. The moment that this is your setup, you're screwed for life. Unfortunate there, as Wei Wei becomes another first blood victim. Was in the first game, of course, as well, to Zhao Hu. This time it's to Long Xing. And uh, still has yet to take a buff. I mean, it's a tough time. The only buff that was even available to him was the blue buff. And how sad that is as a rec side player. Oh. So he just got done in by by the level one, which is great from RNG, awful for him. And now he's once again, as you mentioned, in struggle streak. Uzi now just pushing down the pressure, pushing into this lane, making sure SMLZ does not have an easy time. One thing that Karma does struggle with is uh, CSing underneath that tower, especially if she wants to try and clear the wave quickly. And how sad is it that, you know, you pick in the Rakan and Karma and now you're starting to be on the losing side to the Ezreal Tom Kench. It's, most of it's been a good early level from Karsa and then that gank really put him behind too. So he's in a troubling position. Let's see how SMLZ and Sword Arch can actually bounce back in the lane. Oh no, oh, get that man. Got spotted out. They will get a bit of poke return. Good second, you know, kind of spidey sense, if you like, from SMLZ. Realize that uh, Ezreal's still here, the Tom Kench, no way he went back by himself. <laughs> yeah, and as a small reminder in the patch, abilities that Tom Kench now don't proc his passives, so they do considerably less damage. So the Q that you're looking at, yeah, is definitely the saddest Q you can ever see. It does have a nice cooldown, though, so it's a pretty short cooldown, especially after the hotfix change. But it's more so the auto attacks that the champion's going to be rolling out to be able to, if, if he wants to provide damage in a skirmish that he needs to rely upon. Back down to a pretty, pretty safe laning phase, pretty much from everybody. Top lane not really going to see much of a aggression or anything like that, unless Karsta does decide he wants to try and go on top of it. It's going to be hard for Suning, especially since RNG didn't go in their direction. Infernal Dragon is going to be the first one, and how are they going to be contesting for this one? The RNG's early efforts are starting to pan out. Wow, really? Yeah, we're going to see the engage onto Ming. This could be just a, a grand bait, as here is Karsa. They do get the root down after the tether. Just trying to put down as much what was even poke the as they point? possibly could. What was the point of picking up this, the, the plant? What was... What was Denies it from them. <laughs> <laughs> Even though they didn't need it either, it still denies it from them. He slowed himself. <laughs> maybe maybe he just forgot that that actually does slow, and he kind of walked through it and was like, uh oh, <laughs> I might be in trouble here. That was interesting decisions, but ultimately, I mean, he's still fine. Just staying right back up. I see Angel trying to detect this pink ward, won't be able to do it. Hook shot. Doesn't fully protect the Camille. Now we wait. I think it's all on the junglers, really, to make something happen in these lanes. Ooh, nice trade here coming in. Oh, we're going to see Wei Wei jump nice. in. Flash has got the ultimate, does get the Void Rush, gets the kill, but will be trading his own life. Corky will actually end up taking that one. Ends up being a one for one. Canceled the full effect of the Valkyrie, which is wonderful. But you're right, counter gank comes through on Karsten. He's able to respond, but that's a pretty large wave now being denied experience there, Xiao Hu will not have. Finally, Weiwei finding some kind of headway through this mid lane. 
So we have another look, and this is just honestly Maple making this out of nothing. Yeah, I mean, immediately goes in, knows that Rek'Sai's in the area. It does get pinged out, which is a little bit frustrating from the viewpoint of the Jargon. Knew that the Rek'Sai was going to be coming in. Sad that, you know, Xiaohu stuck around a little bit too long trading into the matchup when he could have known better. I wonder why Corky was the one. Was the Valkyrie was the last thing that damaged him before the terror took him? Because it definitely looked like the Jarvan auto attacked him and then he died. Yeah, I would expect that to be okay. So. Would have to look back at that again. But good, good return gank, if you like, from Weiwei potential. We're seeing a lot of flash on burrows coming out from him. And just as well, like in terms of ultimates to take, you don't think that the uh, Corky ultimate's actually good to take, but it's actually so efficient for except for a Silas to actually steal because he gets his passive on every single ultimate that he uses. Just a small update, because. I don't know if he was chugging a Corrupting Potion, but it could have just simply been Corrupting Potion damage that gave him the last tick. So if he's chugging it, that's just the passive that the Corrupting Potion will have, so... was likely what it was. It's either that or the Valkyrie, it just literally doesn't matter, but... Those are the kind of points that I'm interested in. You see a blue buff attempted steal here. Maple already roamed down, has got priority over the Corky. Now you're going to be able to hand that over to the Silas. Successful invade, but you can already see Karsa over off onto the other side, ready and waiting for uh, a potential retake on those blues. I like the confidence there from Uzi. Knows that he can contest for that one just because Tom Kent is right next to him. Easy as can be. I will stay with how the mid lane's going in a little bit well for Suning, that if they have the constant shove through Silas, and, you know, Rek'Sai's looming over the area. I'm not even so much focusing on the Infernal Dragon, but it's going to be easier to push and deny plating away from Uzi, but it's going to be interesting to see. 2,000 gold lead in favor of RNG, or just a little bit under. As we see Suning just trying to stem the bleeding a little bit, have a slight advantage in top side. Slight advantage, you could honestly say, in the jungle, and then pretty much losing most of the other ones. But with an Ezreal Karma, in the bot lane, you'd imagine the Ezreal should be out CSing the Karma. Ooh, close to being able to get the slow. They'll have to wait the full five seconds for Ming. Gotta be careful. Ezreal hasn't been hit by many of those Mantra Qs for oh, a very no. long time. Sword Art goes in, Sword Art comes back out. Ezreal commits the ultimate just for wave clear. And RNG, they tried to play the baiting game, but Sooning were wise to their tricks. Yeah, they might just end up going for the Infernal Dragon now. This is always just the juggle that you have if you're RNG. You have a lot of pressure in the area, you don't want to be contested. Nice visual bug. Um, you're concerned about Weiwei, especially since he was able to get something on you through mid lane. But now it's going to be nice Infernal Dragon going over to RNG. Yep, RNG take the Infernal Dragon, Sooning trade off for the Rift Herald, but Ming and Camille not quite in time to, to contest it. Here we go. Maybe they still want to. There's the hook shot. Not going to be able to get the stun. They will not get the knock up, but the Hextech ultimatum comes down. There's the Rakan, though. Able to get the charm off and able to knock people back down. Camille comes back out, which means she's going to go down. Cataclysm comes off, and that's only really start trapping everybody on the side of RNG as Uzi now forced to back away from this. Main Flash is going to use the Blast Gun to try and get himself away as Sooning are the ones coming out on top. That is so clean. I was actually really surprised since Uzi was able to join the fight and SMLZ wasn't. He's just having teleport now, but Suning challenged back onto Longshin's initial engage and they come out ahead. 5v4, they pick themselves up two kills. They'll lose a bit of plating in the mid lane, but that's not even that big of a deal. No TP for Uzi either means that that bot lane's going to pretty much re return the favor in terms of plating gold. Yeah. I mean, you'd have to be really confident if you're stunning in that situation to take the fight knowing that SMLZ wasn't going to join you. Take a look at this because while they're backing up and away, Long Sing doesn't nail. He was actually super close to being able to get the stun onto the Angel. Wasn't even going to be able to attempt that. And then while Tom Kench initially saves Long Sing, Long Sing is going to have to join the fight after one or the other. And so they stall it out. It was just a great play ultimately from Sunny. It looks like the arcane shift wasn't in tandem with the, or rather was in tandem with the Cataclysm, as I said, that Maple having to run away. We see this, we saw this the last game as well when he was playing Silas. Now he's trying to run as fast as he can, but Weiwei is here. Teleport comes in, flash, knock up. They're going to try and just burn down the rest of RNG. Here's the engage again from Sword Art. He gets the knock up and it's going to be Ming. Sacrifice to the Sooning Gods. 
As we praise the sun, it's a trade of jungler for support as Uzi has now finally joined the team. 4v4, it's going to be a huge skirmish coming in. Jarvan jumps back in. Cataclysm is going to be traded back over to the Jarvan. Now goes down. He needs Maple. to drop the Cataclysm. Maple was trying to win this fight all on his own. Sword Art just trying to dart back to and fro. They're able to keep the sustain. Angel able to keep himself alive. And Maple is just keeping Zhao Hu at bay. They lock up the Camille. They root him down. But he hooks shots away. Got flash him. and Q. He gets you. And now Uzi forced to flash as well. As we see Sword Art maybe looking for something as well. Knock up. Charm. Sooning. Take the fight. Oh, so well played from Maple and Angel. Not only was Maple just holding his eyes on a Shao Hu and forcing him away from the fight. Even canceling out the Valkyrie initially and just putting enough damage on where he couldn't really do too much. And then it was Angel who was sustaining out with his ultimate. Keeping his team safe at the same time. Well played on the side of Sunni. And you can see the value that Sword Art and SMLZ have with these constant heals and shields able to come out. Mid lane gets the Rift Herald treatment. They get themselves a load of plates and the first turret of the game. That was tough for RNG to take that fight. Unfortunate that the ultimate didn't land by Uzi, but even then, uh, did feel like a losing battle just through the battle of sustain. Nice engage from Weiwei to start. He recognized he can join in knowing that he had his ultimate for the last resort. And then my eyes are on Shahu, who's taking the fight on the left, knowing that he can kind of chip in damage whenever possible. He was initially being zoned out by Sword Art, and then it was, you know, in comes the Cataclysm from Maple, gets the sustain off with his W, and then starts forcing Shahu off to the left. You can see just SMLC just poking and prodding wow. with sword art able to put down shields and tethers and the utility you get with this karma we see why it is just so so important to most people's drafts and angel actually just wilded out in that last fight just healing right back up to 100 percent hp a lot of the reasons because of the sustain buff that happened to you know the ultimate on atrox people having discussions on the whether you know did atrox get nerfed or buff Sure, it's a trade-off. You don't have the revive that you loved making mistakes or just being able to go all in. But now you can literally just be so demonic in these team fights. Yeah, you might not have the revive, but you certainly have a lot more sustain. You don't need the revive if you don't die. And for the first time in this series, Angel finally getting some gold. He's not going to be as, as useless, if you like, in this particular team as he was in that last game. And he's got to feel good about that. And they're starting to set up to take down this uh, bot lane turret, or at least zone Uzi away from it. It's going to be a big worry for RNG now, knowing that the vision's being taken to the bot side of the map. Take a look at this. Yeah, Angel. Valkyrie was used. Angel is going to keep walking away, but they might look for the dive on this. They do look for it. Angel just trying to kite backwards, but that ends up being a pretty simple kill there for Zhao Hu. Yeah, well done. He's already has his Trinity Force, so the Sheen Dam is going to be able to just near one shot. So. Easy kill. Nice pick off to get Angel. Pickoff means that that bot lane turret is going to fall down. They will trade it for the top lane, so equal trade on either side. But the net advantage, if you like, for the side of Sooning is that Cloud Drake that does go over to their favor. So equaling the gold, 1,000 in favor of Sooning. We have a look at the turret plates. You can see how many just Karma got, because SMLZ just didn't leave bot lane. I think I want to see what his item build is going to be going towards. I actually didn't get to get a peek at it. Actually, I'm just cheat by looking at the stream. So Luden's Echo is the first one. Athene's Unholy Grill, a lot of that he's able to attain now. And so this is where your concerns start to come through. Because we talked about the sustain that the Aatrox has during the last team fight. How bad is it going to feel as an RNG player to deal with, you know, the Athene's Unholy Grail shields coming through, the Ardent Sensor that's sure to come from SMLZ. And the redemption on Sword Art, as well as the Death's Dance as well. Like, yeah. Taking down this Aatrox, even though he only has the one item, is just very difficult to kind of conceptualize. It's tough times. He already now has himself his first item. God bless his soul. A lot quicker than last time. And already on his way towards his Black Cleaver as well. And 
You can see that Suning, they've played this comp before, they know what the deal is, they know that the Karma is supplying the Silas, the Rek'Sai, the, the Aatrox with the kind of, you know, protection to be yes. able for them to be the carries. So now, at this point, somebody out there has to pick up uh, an Executioner's Calling. The, the fact that he's able to get his death dance, and we already talked about everyone else on the team giving him that sustain. And at this stage, it's going to be near impossible to pick him down without, like, anything really, without any bit of uh, grievous wound. Have to see what RNG's response is. As the all three outer rim turrets are taken by Suning. They still have two up themselves, so they are winning in that particular objective front. Probably wish that the Cloud Drake was an Inferno, but they'll take what they can. This is a lot more even game state than the last one. Definitely feeling like, you know, there's a lot more windows for this Suning, particular Suning composition. Yeah, and, and Suning's composition works really well in larger open team fights. And if I look at what they have going for themselves, especially with the shove through mid lane, it's going to be harder for RNG to really contest that. Vision's already going to be taken on the right side of the map, but you would expect it sooner to be taken on the left side, where, you know, Baron is going to be the point of focus in a minute's time, so. Right now, I want to be able to see if RNG can be creative enough, knowing that they don't really have any easy points of engage if Camille is not in the fight. She's going to be yeah. rotating a lot more frequently. Did see the redemption come out there from Sword Art randomly on the side. I think they use it more of a scouting tool than anything else to see if they were safe to clear the wards. Baron going to be spawning now in about 40 seconds. And you feel like Sword Art is going to be focusing most of his warding attention on that side of the jungle, play towards your Aatrox. Yeah, it's good to see it now starting to come out from them. They don't have a lot of control wards, and that's where I'm concerned. I think they need a base right now. So once they finally get a shove through mid lane, good time to be able to you know, get a base off, them, depending on the gold that they currently have. And then mass purchase control wards, so when they go up top side, the clear can be a lot better from your end. And RNG, they're now looking down the barrel of a very unorthodox comp. How do they come in? Because primarily their poke comp is get ahead, split push, poke at objectives, and kind of just win the games from there. What's now the game plan that they're kind of a little bit further behind than they expected? I think they can just, once again, play a patient game. The CSing is wonderful for them. Like, 206 CS from Uzi, so once again, he's ahead of the curve, and the same goes to Shahu. Shahu's going to be the more important one of the two. I just want to be able to see him get, like, his three items, so... One moment he got rapid fire cannon since he's got his infinity edge, or he's at least yep, he has infinity edge right now. Then perfect, you could start trying to get extra bit of poke damage on towards Maple or SMLZ to set up for the next fight. So for them, itemizing is incredibly important. Package is available. Maple does not get hit by the Prosperous Bomb and immediately forces the package out. Xiaohu not able to utilize that one. Nice move there for Maple, not getting caught out by the by the Q, giving a false sense of security. There we go. I'm actually really surprised that the Phosphorus Bomb didn't hit him. I thought it was 19th place too. Not good enough. Close, but no cigar. Much like Graves. Sad. Get some rips. <laughs> Get some rips going <laughs> on the street. Honestly, right. like... Uh, this is just gonna sound sad, but a lot of the times when I think about like a lot of the older champions, I mean, or at least the ones that weren't reworked, right? Or at least mm -hmm. the ones, oh god, the ones that visually were upgraded or anything. I'm just talking about the champions like Old Nidalee, it's a great example of that one. Uh, a champion that got reworked, and you have to look back. Old Scion is actually just hilarious to look back. <laughs> you guys have the opportunity to check out Old Scion montages in uh, YouTube. It's actually just hilarious because AP Scion back in the days was actually the most mindless champion. But yeah, you point, click, stone, pop your shield, and then run at them. But like mindless in one of the best ways. So <laughs> made you love the game for what it was back then. We had a discussion about Aatrox's rework actually today. And just like the fact that we loved the fact that his change really encapsulated who he is as a champion. But you always love janky abilities. I love myself janky abilities, and the whole Dark and Death, the Q from Aatrox, his old one, was hilariously awful. I think that we were talking about that a little bit as well, about Aatrox and kind of like how he just feels better now. And like, you just want, when, when a champion comes out and they don't feel good to play, no one's going to want to play them. One of the ones that we kind of talked about was Udyr. Udyr doesn't feel fun to play. He has four elements, and really neither of them make a visual impact. You don't feel like a turtle, don't feel like a tiger. 
the hell am I playing this champion for? Yeah. You mentioned Volley Bear as well. You're like, don't feel good. But well, I think you said, I don't you said don't champion. feel good to play against. I think is what you said. <laughs> I just love the fact that it's getting banned so frequently during the day, in the last series especially. It's getting, it's losing every game in the LPL, but the game plan's pretty damn clear. It tilts, you know what? I love it just because it tilts Clement out of the, like, off the planet. When he sees Volibear gets picked in the LPL, his mind is already blown. He hates the champion. Who would you want to see? Obviously, we have Fiddlesticks and, and Volibear coming up for reworks. Who, in your mind, is, is next on the chopping block for reworks? Um, I mean, for me, Mundo. Like, Mundo conceptually, oh God, what the yes. hell is that? <laughs> like, I think the W is the one that's the most confusing. Doesn't make too much sense on any champion, but I'm not, you know, just going to throw that out there. And uh, we're going to see potentially a bit of an engage. There it is. Nice buffering there on the grand entrance to be able to catch out Karsa. Ignite went down, but the flash was used. Redemption not able to be utilized by anybody, but they get mid lane priority and they, a small breeze will be able to knock that one down for yeah. Suning. Yeah, and at this point, they don't even need to necessarily put pressure towards the mid lane uh, tower at all. If you look at the control wars that they had on the red side jungle of RNG. RNG needs to have some control in the area. They need some def defensive wards. At this stage in the game, Suning have put in a lot of pressure and work to be able to clear out RNG wards on the left side of the map, and I think they've been doing a great, great job. I think we need to start looking into the book of LCK casters for this particular game. Figure out <laughs> like they go into these very in-depth discussions. My personal favorites are always LS and Atlas when they talk about Pokemon. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why. I just find that kind of discussion just really fun. I mean, I just it's one of those things where you probably should just like, you know, you just joined uh, the team. So having those conversations would be fun because I just it's not that I dislike Pokemon. I just don't have any interest to play the games. And I'm also, to be fair, <laughs> For all my previous casters, uh, this is going to be great. I'm the person that understands, like, cultural and movie references the least. The least. I Even less than Clement? Yes. Wow. Yes. I will say for certain. I am the champion and not being able to understand. I actually had to uh, watch the, what is it called again? Jurassic Park? Yes. The Jurassic Park. In fair, I Just haven't recently. seen that one. Well, I mean, because yeah. it came out when I was like super young, and like I think as a kid, I was like, nope, <laughs> I'm noping out of this one. But yeah, that was just something that I need to work on a little bit more and be able to at least, if they're going to continue to throw more movie references, I better at least watch some of it so I don't embarrass myself. Once again, Sitting is actually putting out so much pressure this side of the map. At this point, they should actually just start on the objective. I think they've been doing a great enough job, and I like the fact that at least RNG sent Long Sing within the mid lane so they can. Double up on members to keep mid lane at least somewhat contended. The only issue I see with Suning starting up this objective is without the traditional AD carry, without having someone like a, a Jin or sorry, Jin's a terrible example, but like a Caitlyn or an Ezreal or a Kaiser, taking down that Baron takes a very, very long time. Yeah. And that's where I see the why they're not doing it. They certainly need the Aatrox in the area, and even then then you're not utilizing Aatrox to be in a flank position if they're getting contested. So how do they take the fight? These are all questions that they've gone through in their mind. And yeah, you're right. They're not. Un they're fairly uncomfortable at being able to get take those fights. So don't want to get challenged too much in this situation. See what the uh, call is from Suning. They've obviously established dominance and towards that mid lane, able to reset, pick themselves up a lot of control wards, and looks like they want to just kind of give full vision control to that. Baron, Dragon gonna be spawning in about five seconds. It looks like RNG, they're the ones who wanna try and fight for it. They have got the package available. Yeah, and the fact that the game is stalled out to this degree in which he has, Xiaohu's actually gotten the three items he's been talking about. He's no. in a great position this game. So, I mean, Maple's just trying to challenge him, but he's gonna take that bluff. He Karsa. literally just holding on to his W. Karsa able to sit here. He does come in and get through the flag and drag. Instant Zonias with the redemption coming down as well. Flash away as they just try and regain this fight. Angel pops the world ender. He's just going to try and get as much sustain as he possibly can. It's a poke fight from both ends. The Karma, the Ezreal just trying to do as much damage as they can. There's the Cataclysm. Zonias flag and drag out. And they're still going on to this. Nobody dies. Hellfires are blinking. Slowly and slowly, you're starting to favor RNG in these fights, but guess who's going straight towards the Baron? Yeah, they have the inside track. Suning looking like they can go for this. TPs are available for Xiaohu and for uh, uh, Uzi as they look to try and go for this. They haven't got it just yet. TPs are being utilized. It looks like RNG, they just want to go for this. They're not, they're not even, they're going to call your bluff. You're not doing it. 
All right, here comes Suning. They're gonna try and jump onto the Camille. Camille able to hook shot away. Good poke here from Uzi and from Zhao Hu as Weiwei just jumps onto Langxing, trying to pick him off. Angel, no world ender, no real sustain. They get the mid lane turret, they back away. RNG coming out trumps in that fight. You can start to see how frustrating it is from Suning in this fight. The fact that they're not willing to take the risk around the Baron buff, and you know, RNG was not fighting by any means, they finally hit the item break points so they can start poking down Suning. Suning needs to take this fight, they're realizing it, and uh, they're not landing anything past that. And I love how RNG just called Suning's bluff at the Baron. They were like, we know you're not doing this and just straight up went to the mid lane. Didn't even try and contest for that bush or any kind of side lane pressure. They said, no, we know we can get this tower because you're not doing the Baron. This is when Suning starts to get a little bit desperate. The fact that the Baron buff is still up to play and they still have the control around it, they can go for it now, but the game is certainly gonna get accelerated because RNG can contest it. So we're gonna have to see if RNG can get there quick, fast enough. Uzi is actually basing, but he still has teleport. Yeah. Uzi has got Teleport to join in this one. Maple and Sword Art just kind of playing chicken at the moment with this, making it so that they know that it probably isn't being done. TP going to be channeled here for Uzi as he joins the rest of RNG. Baron down to about 50% HP. They're going to have the Camille jump straight onto Maple, who has got the Zonyas, and the Redemption does come down as well. There's a fantastic combination of Ezreal ult and the Cataclysm as they do take down the Silas. They take down the Rakan as well. It's a double kill for Jauhu as the rest of RNG just keeps chasing. Wow. They keep pushing. They get Uzi another kill as well. It's three. It's four. It's going to be five. And you can just see RNG winning off of that one fight. Karsa can just keep going in, knowing that he has Ming right behind him. And just like that, game turns on its head. Suning is losing this one out. And honestly, with the dead timers the way they are, there might be enough time for the side of RNG just to win the game. Yeah, pretty lamb long. 30 seconds on SMLZ. But you have 18 second Maple. I think they should just take uh, the turret. Maybe risk for an inhibitor. That's going to be on their call. But they shouldn't try for the game itself. Straight onto the Baron, going to be able to take two objectives. A little greedy, but they feel like they can do both. Got the Death Timers on their side. Crack open the base, take the Baron, unless we see a ridiculous Rakan steal. I don't think it's... Oh, as we I say that, though. for a double teleport, but this should be an easy Baron from RNG. Yeah, here we go. They had no smite! They had no smite, but there was no way for Sword Art to know that. It is RNG who take the Baron, but they lose the Camille, and they lose Karsa. They trade two for none. They get the Baron, but at what cost? Now the death timers are on their side. Can the side of SN go any further? I mean, the waves are just not in favor of Suni, right? They only have that bottom lane wave to really utilize if they want to take advantage of the death timers. It's just a big win for RNG at this stage of the game. RNG take the fight, take the Baron. Yes, they lose two off the back of it. Okay. And we'll see. Maple. I'm ready for anything you give me. Oh, they're Literally death pushing. anything. They're death pushing. They know what they need to do. Angel going to try come in with Sword Art, I feel. Maple maybe going to try and turn around and get Let's the catch go. out. But Uzi, wow. guess which way I'm going as they catch out the Abduct. They're trying to just trump, burn down this Tam Kench. They will get him. That's three Baron buffs down. But RNG play it out respectfully. Sure, Tom Kench goes down, but could have been far worse with how that setup went in. So RNG, numbers are back up and available, and they have Baron buff to their names. This is right back at the start. Yeah. Take a second look at this one because the other day how this team fight went through is crucial. The fact that they found the pick onto Maple, Essen recognized that and wanted to commit to the fight. And take a look at Jarvan here. That's where my primary focus lies. He goes in, he actually soaks up so much damn damage. And it's Tom Kench that waits for the perfect opportunity to spin him right back into the back line. And so from that point forward, the full HP members of Longxing, Uzi, and at this stage, Xiao, who's pumping out a ridiculous amount of damage, can just go forward. And SMLZ tried its best, but Karma, once she uses her flash, has no real ways of kind of getting out after that. Tier 2 in the bot side going to be taken down. RNG now with a 5,000 gold lead, or just under it. This is the primary frustration that teams have when they go up against the Tom Kench later on in the game. Even though you could look past that and say, hey, you know what, Tom Kench at least the sustain helps him in the early laning phase, but later on in the game, it's easy to blow him up. But if we're just talking about the fact that he's able to sit so you know, cleanly in the back line, allow Jarvan to do all the work, and then start spitting and rotating people out, it's hard for Sunning to take these front-to-back team fights because of that. And it's so hard to kill this Jarvan as well. Look at Karsa's items. He's got the Scargoyle Stormplate. He's got the Knight's Vow. He's able just to sustain just purely with help, regardless of resistances, because 
overall, there's not much AD or AP that would really burst anyone down on the side of RNG or from Suning. Yeah, 100% Suning's composition has fully fallen off. Uh, we're just talking about the primary threat. It's going to be Angel. Um, a lot of damage coming in through SMLZ that he's went through the Rabbit on Deathcap. He's recognized within the game that as long as this game's going forward, he can't go towards an Arden Sensor. It really wouldn't benefit the team as well. And going towards the Rabbit on Deathcap at least allows him to provide some damage to the back one. Third Cloud Drake going to be spawning now as the final tier two goes down in favor of RNG. Sooning now trying to find a pick, but weren't able to find anything. And they back away. 20 seconds still left on the Baron. RNG got pretty much what they needed. There's now 6,000 gold with a uh, almost potentially triple tri uh, Triforce comp that they could potentially use and a lot of gold in the back pocket of Xiaohu. Getting right back onto the map and now for Suning, I want to be able to see what they can do to start a fight around of Skun Invoke Duck. Because at this stage, trying to find picks is going to be difficult knowing that you have an Ezreal who is taking the side lane and can easily just get out there with his own blink. You have the Tom Kent, who's always going to be able to rotate people in your direction. So it's not going to be easy, much like in game one. I was going to find that opportunity. Everyone on the side of RNG has some way of getting out by themselves, regardless of the Tom Kench as well. So it's just become so difficult, so slippery to catch these guys. And as well as that, the only person who's missing their flash on the side of RNG at this moment is me. Now, where do Suning take it from here? You said you wanted to see them do it, but they're against a very, very much online poke comp that is just going to be able to tear through them if they cannot catch anybody on the side of RNG. And Suning, they know this. They know they need to try and find an opportunity, but back to those windows. Those windows will be very, very, very small as of now. Perhaps uh, we can look towards, you know, if Maple ends up stealing an Ezreal ultimate, that's a significant amount of damage that he can place down an Uzi or Shahu before the fight starts. These are possibilities that we can look for. Of course, he won't have access to the ultimates nearly as frequently as he did pre-patch, uh, but still going to be incredibly helpful for the team at this stage of the game. Let's see what he ends up going for, because the control war on the top side of the map has been point for RNG. Want to be like, I don't think Sunny can ever look to contest if, you know, the next Baron buff seems to be the name of the game, how slow this one's going to be going. Yeah, a minute till that, and like you said, Maple with this Silas was nerfed, had a 15 second cooldown at a level 16 ultimate, now a 60 second cooldown, so significantly higher, 400% increase on that. Not able to pick and choose as freely, needs to just hone in on what exactly he needs for the fight, and I like that, I like that change, the way it makes it so that it's more situational, you don't just grab every single ultimate you can get, you want to get the ones that will help your team. And he has a few more options here. Technically, he can turn it into a poke composition of his own. I mean, just talking about the Ezreal ultimate, but it's also pretty helpful uh, for the Corky ultimate as well, so. Now, a big item was just picked up there for Maple. Finished the Rabadon's death cap just before this potential Baron fight in 10 seconds. You can see Sooning trying to just push up this mid lane. They had bot lane in their favor. They have top lane in their favor. And RNG just trying to equal that one out for themselves. Again, we come back to the problem with the side of Suning's composition. They do not have a quick Baron take. Here we go, though. They're just going to go straight for it. Yeah, they're going to try for it. Ezra ultimate comes out, misses everybody, does a little bit of damage onto the Baron, who's about two-thirds HP. Suning just back away. Camille has not committed the teleport as of yet, and now Suning know they're in trouble. They need to go back before the base is cracked open again. Yeah, they're just going to try and allow as much time as possible for the Camille. At least they respond swiftly, but get, take a look. Who gets control of the Baron side? Heavy pings coming in from RNG. They want to be able to go in now. Yeah, TP's available for both the Aatrox and the Camille. This could be a start off as a 4v4. They pop down the blue trinket. It's down to about 50% HP. Weiwei trying to get himself into this. Here we go. The quickness has been dropped. The smite is not good enough, but Ezreal picks one that up. They get the knock up. They're trying to do as much damage as they can. Sword Art is the first one to fall. As Suning are just losing this fight. You've got to feel they haven't got the damage. They haven't got the time. And their help bars are depleting. Uzi not even going to fall. And the rest of the side. Of oh. and Suning are just not able to do anything. It's going to be the Baron, the soon to be clean ace, and RNG will end the game 2 0. Oh. My god, at least it came through in a flashy demeanor. Maple is going for that 1v1 on Xiaohu. Xiaohu got a little bit of help on that one, but still was able to get the kill. Clean fright from RNG, and they played it pretty respectfully. They knew that they were just waiting on items and they were able to get those points. 
RNG, it took a while. Definitely threw a curveball in the middle of the game there for Sooning, but Sooning did not do anything with their advantages. Two Nexus fall in two games in a best of three series, and RNG now find themselves planted firmly in that top two spot. In the That's a tough loss from Sooning. Honestly, it's a tough loss from them. The fact that they had the early goal lead that you know, we talked about, very similarly, remind me of when Sunning went up against Invictus Gaming before Rift Rivals, and they threw in that different style that they thought that Invictus Gaming wouldn't be able to adapt to. IG did, and within the series, you also saw the fact that it was Sunning not willing to take the risks with the lead that they had. We talked about the concerns about taking Baron or looking to force a fight around that at that stage in the game, but honestly, there will always be a risk because of the composition you had. Didn't go for it. RNG preyed on it and was able to play well around Xiaohu. And Xiaohu and Uzi just did so much damage towards that late fight. You saw that as well. It looked like Maple may be able to take out the Corky and potentially try and turn out the turn around the fight, but Xiaohu was just, just putting out too much damage at that point. Yeah, he played like exceptionally that game. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at the screen. Don't look at it. It, it, you can tell the coach is like, so how did Karma go? No, no, it didn't. <laughs> it, it did not go well. Didn't. Well, it, it, the idea was there, and I like the idea. I think the idea is good, but like you said, you stall out too long in the mid game. Your your small gold advantage, two three thousand, becomes very much insignificant at that point in the game. And at that point, like, you, like we literally called it just as they were about to fight, RNG they had the you know they had the three item Corky at that point, so there was no real advantage to be taken. Yeah, twenty five thousand damage that he was Woo! able to apply that game. Uzi Three. not far behind them. Yeah, both of them put in a lot. A lot of that was just poke very naturally, but of course as the fight went through, they were the main reason. It was so hard to be able to stick on them. That's actually primarily how you know Angel wasn't able to carry out a lot of those team fights. Is that you try and get on Uzi, especially in that Baron fight. Just hops over the wall and finds the terrain as a difference to be able to put uh, eight trucks within an arm's reach. So, from team fight's perspective, man, is it hard from Sunning. And RNG was able to essentially nail it down. Yeah, and as well, we see now why RNG puts a huge emphasis on this Tom Kench. Two games in a row, they first pick it, they go with it 100%, and it just saves them in so many mid game team fights where we saw the Jarvan getting saved, we yes. saw the Corky getting saved, the Ezreal on multiple occasions getting saved. They put a priority on it because they know that if it goes any longer or they you know they know their win conditions, they know they can survive. Yeah, in the hands of better teams, you can actually just use, utilize the ultimates far more better, like far more cleaner. We've seen a lot of uh, games in week eight actually where the Tom Kench didn't apply too much. I'm sure it happened in a previous patch, but even in that situation, a lot of the times, you know, Tom Kench has that tool, you know, post early game where he's able to work alongside jungle and AD carry or whoever to be able to bully side lane. You should be able to take control of side lanes if you have a Tom Kench, always have the numbers advantage. You can get there faster than teleport timing. That's, oh, that will always go down to you. It's more so an indictment on team coordination if you can't get that down. And RNG will consistently pick it up because they can slow the game pace down in team fights, much like you said, and they had full control on side lanes and Long Sing was able to really dictate that flow in the side lane. I feel bad for Angel because he couldn't do too much after uh, the last successful fight around Dragon. Yeah, you almost feel like if he had to swap the golds in both games, he would have had a much better chance of like actually yes. carrying game one because of the added damage of having an AD carry, you know? And, that, and that's the risk you take. You take the Karma, you're looking for that 25 to 30 minute win. If you don't get it, it you're just not going to have the damage overall in the game. Yeah, and I'm kind of interested to see uh, you know, the road for Sunning going forward because after taking the victory over top esports, that was nice. Mm -hmm. I mean, that worked out very well for them. It's, I don't think it's so de too debatable that they're going to be in the playoffs. They're already performing way better than our expectations were, uh, especially after the last split. Going up against EDG as their final series. Week 10, they have OMG and FPX. So it's a mixed bag, especially since by the end of the week, they're going to be finishing off uh, against Victory 5. But they should have secured wins. I think just based off the way they're playing, it's not a concern on if they will make it to playoffs. It's more of a concern of when they get there, like, if they get there, if they're in round one, how they'll be able to perform because we have a lot of great teams in our top eight. Yeah, we have a lot of great teams. And speaking of great teams and great players, our MVP, man of the match, is Xiaohu. I'm going to say Xiaohu. There we it's go. It's Xiaohu. Yeah. <laughs> that's going to be a seventh MVP. Woo! 100% kill participation. That's a, that's a clean number right there. And you can see nearly 40% of his team damage. He was just so good on this Corky. That was really well played on him. And here's a small, a small thing for RNG. 
the MVPs are a little bit of a race within the team. Coming mm -hmm. into this series, Shahu had five MVPs. And just behind him, Uzi and Carson were tied with, with four MVPs, so they thought they could chase him, but nah, it's not happening. We saw something similar with the MVP race for, for FBX as well. You yes. have Doombi and... Uh, and NTN. NTN, yes. And LWX. Actually, and LWX, LWX, LWX as well, LWX yes. I was going to say, and then, like, you know, it's kind of funny to see how Knight will probably end up winning regular season MVP. But, uh, again, you know, these are were, these were really good fights from Sooning in the early game. It just kind of got away from them. Yeah, and a lot of it came through, through like, with how close this fight was 13 minutes into the game. You kind of got the feeling that, well, Sooning better make the best use of these skirmishes. Like, they better start, you know, taking great control through mid lane, which they were. Mm -hmm. Like, to their point, I think a lot of the reasons why this game slowed out because when they're starting to get control of topside, they didn't have control or it's within their own inventory. They needed the base, right? So they actually stalled themselves a little out on that point. But then when they finally got back out there, they were, you know, unsure of whether or not they needed to be able to pick a fight and how to do it. Um, kind of reminded me of, fun fact, Flash Rolls 2017. Flash Rolls major issue in internationals is the fact that when they were able to get those leads, they actually weren't able to finish the game and finding that one specific fight. This time around, Sunning go up against RNG, flash rolls players on both teams, but he had one more flash roll player on Sunning. That's yep. my analytical uh, take on it. If you're a, a legacy flash roll fan, you just want to see both sides do well. You know, you want to see RNG players do well because of the, obviously, the legacy of the, the players who were there and obviously Sunning as well, but that fight honestly was just the end, uh, the end of times for the side of Sunning. This, they tried but it was just too little too late. Yeah, the control was already there, and they were already kind of focused on Long Sing in the bot lane, right? So the reason why they gave up position on the Wars Baron is because they were having an inhibitor being threatened by Long Sing. So it's the typical RNG threat between Baron and uh, inhibitor that they've been doing with Amazing J, with Let Me. It's just a point that they can be very comfortable that they'll be able to succeed off. And there's a lot of positives to take from that game as well from Sooner. Like you're going against arguably you know, people could argue that RNG are the, the strongest team in the LPL right now. You know, we still have yet to see them play against FBX, but definitely something, there's an argument to be had there. And, you know, putting up a fight, it didn't look like, a 2-0 doesn't give it justice, I feel, especially for that second game. Yeah, I think we'll see, I want to see a little bit more of RNG and what they can do going forward. I think the fact that RNG have, I'm just trying to recall their last series because I do remember RNG going up against FTX, if my memory serves me Was correctly. it the one loss? Potentially? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. And maybe I'm thinking Because of they grew I'm as a team. And yes, they got a lot that's better. correct. That's because correct. That's, that's ultimately my story, is that I think they got a lot better coming into this one. That Long Sing is a lot more in tune with the map. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that this team is, once again, like able to take those fights, incredibly comfortable with Long Sing being on side lane. They don't have to always have him in mid lane, mm -hmm. like supporting the team. They can slow the pace of the game down to fit Shahu and Uzi. And it's not just about Uzi. It's not about like, uh, you know, the top lane on any means. I think Shahu is the strongest player right now on the map for the team. And it's been consistently the case, uh, you know, since the beginning of the year. Yeah, we'll have to see now. We'll have a look, quick look at the standings after today's two series. Real Never Give Up reclaiming top spot from top esports. Sooning dropping a game means they go back into that cauldron of teams that are fighting for those playoff buys. Yeah, and it's going to be fun to see. Specifically, we talk about the fight around eighth place as well. You know, Victory 5 now, right now, firmly in a four series losing streak. It's kind of, it, it hurts from them. Not looks, it doesn't look good by, uh, to them by any means. You want to be able to see what Team WE and JDT can do to be able to challenge for eighth place. And tomorrow we see one of our playoff contenders look to try and strengthen their claim on that last playoff spot as WE take on Vici Gaming. And then it is potentially a uh, battle for, you know, kind of uh, the, the development teams as such for DMO versus LGD. I'm expecting a lot of new things from that last match. Uh, mainly because I feel like both of these sides have kind of, you know, resigned themselves. Like, we're, we're not making playoffs. <laughs> like, they, they're like low-key, just like to each other. It's like, it's not happening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, Dominus is the one that we look there. at and say, <laughs> do you have something to offer? Natural in the top lane. They're looking better. They won that series in Dominus Appreciation Day. That's true. They got that going for them. I think they need the cheerleaders every week. They do. They, they that do. was the that was the, the push they need because they've actually taken a couple of scalps. They didn't. They've done really well for themselves. That's yeah. actually the day where we moved on after the game two. Yes. We moved on to the team. We didn't WWE even get to see them IG taking game. the we two. We didn't actually see what happened. Maybe the trick 
maybe the, the if we look didn't, away. Yeah, didn't that happen for the JDG series as well? Didn't they beat them because we went two, we went one one, and then we walked away, and then we came back, and they had what? You know what, DMO? Schrodinger's LPL game yeah. is when you, if you don't see it happen, you don't know what actually. Maybe they don't maybe, lose the game. Maybe. But, <laughs> but yeah, I think definitely going to be some fun games or happy is what they called it after uh, MSI. Some happy games. Happy but, games when a yeah. team trolls out. I'm not expecting <laughs> that. I think we're going to see the best of both of these teams and the best. I mean, it's going to have to be good enough for one of them. I think LGD, I'm excited to see how Bademan is going to be coming into the team. He's actually been performing incredibly well in his debut performance. Mm -hmm. He actually got an MVP on his debut game. So at least they're kicking up some fight. Yeah, absolutely. But for now, that is all we have time for, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us on this evening of games. Of course, thank you to our production team and the back end making all this possible. And thank you, Raz, for joining me. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's nice to have you, too. Yeah, man. I'm happy to be here, you know. But for now... We will wait until the next games come. We'll see you guys very, very soon.